Hey, I'm Jesse from thecampingnerd.com and today I'm going to be showing you how you can connect solar panels to portable power stations. Uh, more specifically power stations from Gold Zero, Jackery and Max Oak. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I'm not an expert, I'm not an electrician and I don't work for any of these companies. So before you're going to do any of these things I'm going to be doing, you should talk to the company and ask if it's okay to plug this into that and so on. I have written several articles on the website about this subject and they've been getting a lot of traffic and comments with questions uh, so that's why I'm making this video hopefully to clear some of the stuff up but also have to show how it's done more than just in text. The power stations I have here are the Gold Zero Yeti 1000, the Jackery Explorer 500 and the Max Oak Blue Yeti AC50. The solar panels I'm going to be using are these uh, portable Renergy panels these are 100 watt each you can buy these portable panels with or without the solar charge controller. Uh, you should buy one without if you're only going to be plugging it into a power station since the power stations already have a charge controller built in. I also have one of these portable and foldable solar panels. This is from Rock Pals and it's their 80 watt model. If you're planning on mounting panels permanently on top of a van or a camper like I have here, these are the Renogy 100 watt solid panels. They have the same MC4 connectors as the portable ones so there's nothing extra you need to know. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be linking to all of the products I'm going to be talking about uh, in the description below. I'm also going to link to the articles that I mentioned. Uh, they've been getting a lot of questions and I've answered a lot of them. So if you have a very specific question, there's a chance that it has already been answered. So please look through the comments down there. But feel free to leave a comment on YouTube too. I'm going to do my best to help you as soon as possible. I'm going to be getting some camera help from my wife Jenny. So thank you Jenny for helping out with this. So the first thing I want to talk about is what the connectors coming out of the solar panel looks like. And they look like this. Uh, these are called the MC4 connectors. And I don't know if it's the official name for it, but I like to call this the male connector and this the female. One of these connectors is a positive connector and one is a negative. Uh, it's really easy to check if you have a multimeter. Or if you buy a panel from Renogy, then you know that all of the male connectors are positive and the females are negative. The way you can check it with a multimeter is that you put the red one into the male and the black one into the female. And then on the screen here we see a positive 18.7 uh, voltage. This means that we have, the, we have found the positive connection and that is on the male. If we would do the opposite and put the black, uh, which is the negative, into the male and the red positive into the female then we see that it says minus 18 that means that uh, we have connected the positive to the negative and the negative to the positive so as I mentioned Renogy panels have a positive male and a negative female most other solar panels I've seen on Amazon are also wired that same way but I have heard of some panels from uh, Harbor Freight uh, I think that were the opposite way so if you're not sure you should definitely try it with a multimeter the Rock Pals is a little bit different and most of these portable foldable panels are the same way. They don't have MC4 connectors but they have a single DC output port. So this little panel has a junction box with a USB port and a DC output and it came with this cable that you plug into one side. It comes with a lot of different adapters because it depends on the power station and they want to sell a panel that fits them all. But you want to make sure that it comes with the right connector for your specific power station. Even though these three power stations are from different companies, there's one thing that they have in common. That is the 8mm DC input. You find it on the Gold Zero, on the Jackery, and on the Max Oak. There's also the Anderson input, which looks a little bit different. And I know that this one is also on the newer Jackery Explorer 1000. We'll get to that one in a minute though. We're gonna focus on the 8mm for now. All right, so we know that my Renogy panel has MC4 connectors and we know that the power stations have 8mm. So what we need is one of these. This one has MC4 connectors on one side and the 8mm on the other side. One company that actually includes one of these adapters is Max Oak. Uh, you can get it with the AC50 and their larger uh, power stations as well. But when it comes to Gold Zero and Jackery, you gotta buy one of these if you wanna connect the uh, MC4 solar panels to these power stations. We're back at the panel. We're just gonna be going back and forth here today. So, what we have on this adapter is a positive female connector and a negative male connector. So. That makes it the opposite of the Renogy panel, and that is what makes it a match. So now I can plug this in, just like that, and now it's ready to go. The absolute last thing you gotta do before you plug it in, or you should actually do this before you buy the panel, is to make sure that the input port can handle the panel you're gonna connect. On the Yeti 1000, there's a sticker that says 
never exceed 22 volt input. On the Jackery, I read in the manual that it can handle up to 30 volts. On the Max Oak, there's a little text around the input port that says 14 to 40 volts. It's not gonna accept the charge if we go above that voltage, so that's something really important to know about. On the back of the Renogy panel, there's a sticker that tells us all of the specifications that we need to know about this panel, like the voltage. When it comes to Gold Zero, they've told us to look at the VMP voltage, which in this case is 18 volts. And depending on the company, like Jackery, they told me to look at the VOC voltage, which is 21.6. So it depends on the company. I think you should ask them before you buy anything uh, which voltage to look at, and they will be able to give you a more direct answer about that specific power station. I haven't seen any power station that can't handle at least a single 100 watt panel and its voltage, uh, so just so you know that a 100 watt panel will be fine. Based on what I've seen, the only time you have to worry about this is when you're going to connect several panels in series. And most of the time you don't have to do that even if you want to combine several panels. Okay, we're getting there. So, we got the panel, we got the adapter, we made a connection, and we know that these power stations can handle it. So let's plug them in and see how they do. I had to move over to where there was some sun. So now I'm going to plug it in. First the PWM charge controller on the Yeti 1000. And it tells us that we're getting 63 watts. So let's move that over to the MPPT, which is the better of the two, and that's showing 77 watts. Let's go get the Jackery, 61 watts. The Explorer 500 has a PWM charge controller, but I know that the newer uh, Explorer 1000 has an MPPT, so that one is going to do a little bit better than this. And now let's go to the Max Oak. The input on the Max Oak is actually in the back. So I'm going to plug that in right there. And we'll look on the screen what it says. This one is an MPPT, so it will do a little bit better. It is actually a better MPPT than found in the Yeti 1000 even. So we're getting 86 watts from the single 100 watt panel. And if we look at my watt meter, which will tell us a little bit more exactly, this also shows 82 watts. 80, 81, that's really really good. So now let's talk about the Anderson input. If you're going to connect more than 120 watts of solar, you do want to use the Anderson port on the Yeti, because the 8mm port can only do 120 watts. So this is the adapter we need to connect to that port. As you can see, it has the female MC4 connector, that is a positive, and it has the MC4 male connector, that's a negative. On the other side, we have this Anderson power pole connector. When you buy this adapter, it might not fit the orientation of the input port on the Yeti or the Jackery. So what you do is you slide them off of each other, they sit on top of each other and then they just like slide on top of each other. So you want to turn them the correct way. And on the Yeti, this is the correct way. So then I'm just going to slide this one on top of the red one until you hear it click. Then you put this sleeve back on. And now it'll fit into the port on the Yeti. With one of these foldable panels, like the Rock Palace 80 watts, you just gotta put on the correct adapter, and then you can just plug it directly into the power station. It's cloudy right now, so it's not gonna be a very high watts, but this panel usually performs really good. The last thing I wanna do today is show you how you can combine several panels to charge your battery faster. Of course, it's all gonna depend on which power station you have and how much watts that specific power station can handle. But with something like the Blue Eddy or the Yeti 1000 that can handle more than 100 watts, uh, combining two panels, like uh, these 200 watt panels can be worth it. There are two main ways that we can connect these panels together, either with a parallel connection or a series connection. A parallel connection means that we're gonna take the positive wires from each panel and connect them together, and then we're gonna do the same with the negatives, but they're always gonna be separate from each other. The way we can do that easily is with an MC4 Y branch. These are sold in pair because they look slightly different, like you can see this one has two male connectors and this one has two female. So this one with two female is the one that's going to take the male connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the first positive wire. Now I've taken the both positive wires from both panels and connected them into this one MC4 wire branch. Then I'm going to do the same with the negative one, but this one that has two male connectors. And it's going to get the, the female connectors from the panels. So what we end up with here is a positive MC4 male connector and the negative MC4 female connector. So now we can plug this into the MC4 to 8mm or the MC4 to Anderson adapter. So a parallel connection adds the amperages together but it keeps the voltage the same. So if we look at my watt meter here, 
it tells me that we're getting 19.7 volts, which is the same that we get from one panel. But if we connect this into the Yeti right now, it's going to show twice the amperage because we have two panels connected in parallel. To make a series connection, you don't need any adapters. So then you're going to just take the MC4 male connector and plug it into the female connector in the second panel. So now we have one male connector from one panel and one female from the second panel. If we plug this into my wattmeter right now, it shows me right here on the screen that we're getting a 39.9 volts. Since the Yeti has a sticker on it that says they can only handle 22 volts, we should not connect these right now to the Yeti. Some power stations can handle a lot more than 40 volts, so then you can make a series connection. I know that the new uh, Yeti power stations like the 1000X and the 1500X and so on, can handle up to 50 volts but if you don't know for a fact that your power station can handle over 22 volts then I definitely suggest going with a parallel connection. There is one more way that we could connect panels together but you gotta have at least four panels and that is with a parallel series connection. So to make that kind of connection you make two pairs of parallel so we would need uh, another pair of these and two more panels. So we would connect these two panels in parallel then have another pair of panels uh, connected in parallel and then we combine them all in series. So it is like you're connecting two big panels in series together. What that will do is double both the amps and the volts. And with some power stations, like some of the bigger Max Oak Blurry power stations, uh, that can handle like up to 10 amps, but up to 60 volts, that can be necessary to reach the higher input. But most people aren't gonna have to do that kind of connection. The input ports on power stations not only have a voltage limit, but they also have an amperage limit. And as you can see on the max oak, it says that there's a 10 amp max. The 10 amp uh, in this case means uh, 120 watts because it is a 12 volt DC power. The 8 millimeter port on the Yeti has the same 10 amp limit and that's why it can only handle up to 120 watts. I don't remember the limit of the input port on the Jackery exactly, but I know that the Explorer 500 can handle up to like 65 watts when using solar panels. If you want to buy some extension cables uh, so you can put the panel further away from the power station, I recommend these Windy Nation cables. I have taped these together with the electric tape, and, but you can get these in all kinds of lengths and uh, even the different gauges. So I'll leave a link to those down below as well. I have left these out for about a year now in rain and even some snowstorms, and they're holding up fine. It's definitely a cable that I recommend. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you might want to get a wattmeter like this. I put on the MC4 connectors myself, uh, so you might have to get an MC4 kit to put them on. But it's nice because you can plug this uh, between your solar panel and the power station, and you can see how efficient the solar charge controller in the power station is. For example, if I plug this into the Gold Zero Yeti, which doesn't have a very good uh, solar charge controller, um, it will usually show like 10 watts more than it, the screen on the Yeti shows. And that tells me that it's not very efficient. So that's all I've got for you today in this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. You're gonna find links to all of these panels, the adapters, the extension cables and the power stations in the description down below. If you want to see more videos like this about power stations and solar panels, you should definitely subscribe and please leave a like and uh, thanks for watching.